Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Hi, we are at the end of July, celebrating a whole new uh, platform, what I call, they say August is the month of health and wellness and how apropos it is for us to enter to the next month with your favorite hypnotherapist, right? <laughs> well, for those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Lisa Bubari. I am uh, by trade, I'm a clinical uh, certified clinical hypnotherapist, stress management com, uh, consultant, and also just graduated uh, two months ago by getting my certification in anger management. So all these certifications, and here I am doing, uh, hello everyone, hi Tanya. I just wanted to say hello to all of you. Thank you for being here, for being present. So what is today going to be? I want to touch upon three things of how affirmations work. Um, you can always find me at healwithin.com. You can message me. You can go on my site. You can log in and even get a free 10-minute uh, audio recording recorded by me as a gift to you. So just go to healwithin.com. Put your name, uh, put your email in there and get, get to download a 10 minute uh, relaxation audio recording. Believe it or not, it is 10 minutes that can boost, give you a boost during your day. It can relax you and boost you so that you can continue on the next uh, whatever, however, hours that you are continuing to work or do something is like this mini a nap time. So today we're going to talk about um, affirmations. Do they work? Do they don't work? What prompted me to speak about this was this morning as I'm getting ready to come to work, I was listening. As always, I order Alexa. Yeah, I don't want to say it out loud because even right now it's playing something and I don't want that music to change. But I called out and I said, the first thing I say is, Alexa, um, my kabuble. So I start with my, uh, my day with my kabuble. Uh, when I am up getting ready, I love the music. I like to sing with it. So how do you get up every single morning? What is your routine? What wakes you up? My well, at six o'clock in the morning, my dog wakes me up for me to take him for a walk. But what do we surround ourselves with afterwards as you're getting ready after your shower? What do you listen to? What do you look at? How do you feel? Those matter. Hi, Ruby John. Hello, Adrian. So now that we put that part, Maca Buble came on and it was when I meet you, the song, the title is, uh, if I met you or when I meet, when I meet you, something like that. I can't remember it. I had it two minutes ago. This is what happens when you become absent-minded, right? How many of us go through this? Anyhow, when I meet you, that's the song, I believe. And I was th thinking, Cat Whiskers getting a kiss? Huh? That's not the name of the song. Um, when I was thinking about that, the song in itself is written as if when I meet you, this is what's going to happen. When you come into my life, this is what it is. You are in my life. I am attracting you into my life. We are doing the dance together. I am cherishing you. This entire song, I think he, would, he wrote it and he sang before he got married. So in a way, it's manifesting what he wanted into his life. And that's a part of what, as a hypnotherapist, we do with our clients. 
You see, when a client makes the appointment and they come into our office, I usually offer a free consultation for those who do not know what I do, my approach and everything. And my past clients who refer clients to me, thank you to all of you, they already have shared something about me, uh, about what hypnosis is, about the office. So when they come in, I ask them what it is that they're here for. Usually folks who go to a hypnotherapist know exactly what they are going in for uh, to make the change within themselves. So a part of the consultation is for them to come not only to meet with me, and I do the same thing online, uh, is to get acquainted with the environment, ask any questions that they want, and we go through uh, the entire procedure of what it feels like, what hypnosis does, the conscious, the subconscious, everything about their programming, how long they have had this issue, what hypnosis feels like, for them to have just a gist of an understanding, right? So manifesting what we want is to come into the office, like going to any doctor's office, is to say, I have a pain, or I have this issue, I want to take care of it. And then what I do is instead of getting rid of something, we help manifest what the client wants. Exactly like Michael Bublé's song. It's creating it as if it is happening now, creating as if this is what I want, creating as if this is what I am stepping into, and this is what I am becoming. You see, uh, the whole thing, I am redoing my entire uh, Stand Up to Slim Down, right? My book for so many of you know it as weight loss, and it's not losing weight, but dropping weight. So I'm redoing my booklet because we moved from one company to Ingram, uh, where Barnes & Noble is going to carry, and Amazon has already been carrying my books. And for those of you who didn't know, I have three books already self-published, but we're redoing everything. Come September, there is going to be so much more that I am bringing for you, my audience, my clients, everyone. But rewording it, redesigning everything we want is after a few years, we want to replenish our energy. We want to bring something better for our clients, our audience, our family, our, our own well-being, right? So... This part of the affirmation is, it's not what you want to lose, it's not how much weight you want to lose, but what is it that you want to look like, feel like, be like in your life, in your lifestyle, in your body, in your image, about yourself. It's like, this is what I want to become. This is how I want to feel. This is, this is the clothes I want to wear. And that is exactly like Michael Bublé's song, the affirmations. And believe it or not, the more you sing it, the more you feel it, the more joy it brings into you. Especially if you want to create this incredible, loving relationship into your life. Listen to that song. Make that song as if it is yours. Create it with your own affirmations or make uh, Bublé's affirmations become a part of your affirmations. I have affirmations uh, as a booklet that is to come in September as well. And we take those affirmations and we make those reality. Someone emailed me just a week ago and said, do you ever have days that you are depressed? 
Well, allow me to share something. Just yesterday, I'm sitting in my, uh, and I'm pointing as if you can see, but behind this wall is where our reception area is. Yesterday, about 2.30, 3 o'clock, I sat down and I was talking to my office administrator and I just said, I am tired. I am exhausted. I am tired. I am depleted because of being overwhelmed of so much that was, has been coming onto me. And uh, responsibilities, being responsible for this and answering this. There was so much of fires to put out in just one week that I felt exhausted, truly. And the moment I feel exhausted, I feel depleted. When I feel depleted, I like to call it, I'm in a funk. I go into a funk. Instead of saying, I am depressed, I call it, I feel depleted. I say exactly how I feel. I am exhausted. And I am in a funk. Because when I call it a funk, I know it is something of passing. And once I name it, express it, voice it. That means now it is a reality and I can do something about it instead of feeling it, being in it, and then going deeper into it. That's, this is how I deal with things that come onto me. And once it's done, once it becomes reality, I like to call it express it versus suppressing it right? Express versus suppress. Once it's done, then I have this whole scope of what I can do, what is beyond the scope of my help, my world, and the things that I have absolutely no control of, now I can just let them go. Really, letting it go and chuck it into experience, chuck it into this is what it cost me, either emotionally, physically, mentally, professionally, financially, right? It's the entire hand. When, they, when I say the pendulum has gone, how far? The pendulum can be uh, emotional, it can be professional, it can be personal, uh, but it is a pendulum of how far we can let it drop through the fingers or have a grip on it. Once you have a grip, once you can handle it, once you can do something about it, now you're in control. When you go into hypnosis, you're not out of control, you're not under a spell, but you're in this wonderful state of being. Total control emerging and submerging deeper within yourself to have a better understanding of what you feel, what you think, what you know, what was in order for you to do something about it right here, right now. Hmm. So those affirmations, you repeat them in a state of hypnosis. Mm. When you feel so open, when you are open to accept affirmations, suggestions that are only for your good, because now I know what you want, now I know what you want to create in your life, and you can do this on your own and you don't necessarily have to go to a hypnotherapist if you learn which i also teach self-hypnosis once you learn how to do self-hypnosis and do affirmations you can record it and then 
give yourself the suggestions to go deeper and deeper into that wonderful state of relaxation or even listening to that 10 minute re uh, relaxation that I give you. While you're in that relaxation, before you even go to that relaxation, you can write all the affirmations you want, what you want to manifest, what you want to feel, what you want to let go of. See, letting go instead of getting rid of negative energy. You don't want to create that angry negative energy, but you want to manifest what you want. What you want is to let go. What you want is to feel better, healthier, more in harmony, calmer. And when something triggers you or pushes your button, you want to feel in balance, calm, so you can cope with it, deal with it, and know what to do. Just like what I was feeling yesterday. Overwhelmed, exhausted, depleted. And then once I mentioned it, once I brought it to surface, it's like, okay, I came back. Believe it or not, I jotted everything down. I wrote in here things I cannot control. And then I had a whole list in here, uh, wanting to be courageous and I am faced with something. Is there something that fears me, scares me? Excuse me. Well, did I feel shame? No, I did not. Did I feel fear? No, I did not. So those are the questions I ask of myself. Is there things that I am afraid of not expressing? Mine was no, but those are, and I wrote down the things that I needed to express and I wrote it. I wrote each and every one of them down. And then I said, we don't have to take off the roof in order for us to tap within. So it's not like you don't have to do a whole roofing in order for you to fix a leak, right? So sometimes we put ourselves in a position that we get so overwhelmed and bogged down, we forget all we have to do is to sit back, to sit back and do nothing and just go with the heart instead of the head. Most often, we think so much and we overwhelm ourselves instead of tapping into our heart, into our gut, into what feels good. And then all the answers come. So in a way, what I do is I evoke all the things I feel. I embrace what I am going through so that I can evolve to what it is that I want to feel. And what I wanted to feel was, I wanna feel lighter. I wanna let go of some of those issues and bring it to a close and maybe calling it a lesson, calling it whatever it is that you want to call yours. And that's how we transform. So today, if you happen to have a, a problem that you have not found the solution yet, sit down, write it down. Write down what you believe the problem to be. And then you can also write down, is this true of what I think or is this true of what it is? Sometimes. Our, mis our perception might be misleading because the same way as our body protects us, most often our mind wants to protect us. So it gives all these incredible excuses that creates our own sometimes warped reality. Just like any argument, there's two sides. 
he said, she said. And then there is the one side that the listener listens and then they can go ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. And that's when the net turns around and says, wow, both sides are valid. Both sides serve fantastically, but being the net, they can also make sure that what they thought it's a volley or that they thought it's an ace it was not so there is this incredible part of us it's called the critical factor that sits between our conscious level and our subconscious level and the critical factor reasons and judge analyzes and criticizes right and creates this incredible perception to protect a layer of thought and I want to ask you how often have you put yourself in a place that you thought there's no way out until you go into this quietness into this state of relaxation and calm and let go of this incredible hold you had and drop into your heart, into your gut, and realize, what if I let this go? What if I realize I can walk away? What if I drop that perception and manifest something better in my life? You see, when I have uh, all, uh, hello, Tony John, how are you? Uh, when we get angry, when we are filled with all this negativity, resentment and everything, we are surrounding ourselves with a negative energy. And when we are in that negative energy, especially for those who are doing healing work, loving work, uh, counseling, consulting, uh, there is it is harder for us to help someone else when we have a heaviness around us because it doesn't penetrate right even the message that is being conveyed is not right because it's not fair for our clients it isn't so that's why it's best for you to clean it up have a calmer disposition have a better healthier being when you are working with clients and it could be in real estate it could be in consulting it could be in finance because those are the most important parts of the hand the hand that can handle so much the hand that we shake hands with the person we want to help and give them more health wellness prosperity right so when we feel upset, angry, resented, or suppressed emotions that uh, we feel overwhelmed, we are surrounded with that. What better way to get a massage, to clear yourself, go jogging, go exercise, go dance, even stand up. Uh, you know, sometimes I do this, uh, I'm sitting and I'm going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that in itself creates a whole new energy. 10 times this way, 10 times this way. It's great for your hands. It's great for shaking, moving. That even um, any place you go to from Zumba, from energy, it's exuding in mind, in body, in everything. So if you can't get off your desk to do a change, do a change right here. Do a change right there. Even clapping changes energy, right? So everything we do physically, mentally, emotionally brings you out of that funk. Yes, a funk. And if you put 2%, 3%, 5%, 10% more energy in that moment, 
Adrian will attest to it. When I get into that funk, I ask for the music. And if it is something to manifest in my life, like what my, Michael Bublé says, oh, so much better. But better than that, I put like music like Zumba, music like uh, salsa, merengue. And to me, one song will change everything. For some people, it is the Gregorian chant. Whatever it is for you that gives you this sense of soothing, calming, embracing, loving, evolving to a better place is what you need to do. So, even calling the angels, right? I like to call it every time there is a bell that rings, just like um, the movie the miracle mile, right? During Christmas, when you hear a bell, you know that the angels are around you and they're listening. So with that, hi, Siddha John. Hi, Clarice. Hello for all of you who are here present. By all means, I'm here. Yep, Samba is great for that. There you go. Um, is there any questions? Is there anything? My question to you is, what gets you out of funk? What gets you shifting your energy? And for three of you, uh, I would like to say, I want to gift you something special. I'm going to uh, send you the booklet that I am creating of affirmations and everything is going to be absolutely amazing and gorgeous. There's so much coming for you, even weekly getting togethers here at our healing center. Uh, what is it that you want? Here's something. Instead of me making decisions, what is it that you would like to see? What is it that you want to hear? What is it that you want to be more informed of? Techniques, tools, uh, what is it that you want to receive? And for the three of you who post something either in public or message me, you will be receiving my first booklet of affirmations coming to you. And yes, uh, I'd like to gift that to you to three people who will be the first who say something, who ask me something actually better than. Give me something that you want to receive, you want to learn, you want to manifest. And if I can help you, by all means, fantastic. If I can't, I will find ways and the people who can. And for that, it would be my gift to you. It's always good because I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to learn from you. I want to give back. And by giving to you, I do my own homework and listen and learn more often as well that said is there any questions right now alexa michael Bublé, just like that <laughs> see i don't know if you can hear it or not i just ask alexa to pay play michael Bublé. so what do you want consider me your alexa and what would you like Hello, Rosa John. How are you? We are almost at the end of today's Hill Talk Tuesday. We talked about manifestation, manifesting, not manifestation, but manifesting. We talked about releasing what we are overwhelmed with. And when we feel lighter, better, healthier, and happier, we attract more more clients, more energy, more funds and finances and success and prosperity. And that is what is the most attracting to our clients. So with that, may you have an incredible, loving day. God bless you. And may the universal light be with you. Until next week, I'll see you. See you next week. Bye-bye.